Hello, everyone, and welcome to a mini Q&A session for the introduction to well cementing. As you may know, we have had uh, some technical problems last time. So as promised, we are um, actually broadcasting right now the um, Q&A. Uh, with us today, Engineer Ahmad Mansour. Uh, engineer Ahmad Mansour is a drilling and cement engineer at BG Services in Permian Basin. USA. He's also a PhD candidate in Texas Tech University Petroleum Engineering. He graduated from Texas Tech with master's degree and bachelor's degree from University of Tarabli in Petroleum Engineering major. Uh, Engineer Ahmad, welcome back. Thank you, Niha. Thank you so much. Thank you. Just let me pull uh, the questions. So the first question, in semen slurry, other chemicals are also mixed with the slurry in order to achieve desired properties li uh, like we have cement additives and polymers. So uh, can you please tell us which one is the best to use considering the economy, compatibility, and better results achievement at high temperature wells? Okay. Uh, that's actually a really, really good question. Uh, first of all, I would like to say it's based in the area that you're working on. Every area has certain requirement and uh, rules and uh, property that we need to achieve. So uh, what I'm going to answer now, it's based in the area that I cover. Uh, usually, like the mo most two additive that we would like to add to the cement, it's accelerator and retarder. So accelerator is to short uh, the bomb time of the cement and retarder to extend the bump time of the cement. So if we're dealing with shallow cement job, which need like short time, we add accelerator, of course. And if we're dealing with uh, long deep cement well, uh, cement well or oil well, we add um, retarder. And uh, sometimes we add uh, ASA 301, which is uh, anti-settling uh, agent or to prevent any settling of cement after we bump it. And um, dispersant uh, to reduce the friction pressure while we bump the cement. Uh, bonding agent to improve the bonding between cement and casing and cement and the formation. Uh, um, as well, we add fly ash uh, to uh, reduce the cost of the cement. So these are the most common additive that we use for cement. I believe this is like in United States and overseas as well. This is the mo most common additive in general. Great. Um, so another question, uh, what are the complications encountered in cementing and horizontal drilling? And can you also elaborate on that a bit? Because we received um, multiple questions on horizontal drilling and cementing job um, in these wells. Okay, uh, most common problem, huh. One of the most common like uh, problem that we deal with uh, whenever we do a horizontal cement job, it's uh, the bonding between the cement and the formation and the cement and the casing. Uh, as you may know, like after we done with the cement, uh, the uh, wheel completion team is gonna come over and start fracking the formation. So if you have bad like uh, bonding between the cement and uh, the casing or cement and the formation, you will end up with the uh, communication between uh, frac stage. And this is gonna lead to uh, a big uh, remedial job to, uh, close this communication channel between multi-stage uh, frac. So this is one of the most common problem. It's to make sure that you have no channeling or no free water in your cement and horizontal lateral section. So whenever you're gonna do your frac job, you're not gonna encounter any problem and you're not gonna need to do any remedial job. Uh, other than that, uh, you need to be perfect whenever you do cement job for lateral section. What I mean perfect, this mean there is no place for any mistake, whether like using the wrong additive or uh, whether you're having like equipment issue uh, because uh, one mistake in uh, horizontal uh, or in lateral section 
which we call it critical job, uh, could lead like to a big loss for uh, the oil company, which here we're talking about around $4.5 million. Because if you do a mistake in vertical well, there is a lot of uh, way to solve this problem by using a remedial job. But in horizontal section, we probably end up abandoning the well or drilling another horizontal section with the same vertical uh, uh, well. So uh, yeah, that's the most two common problem. Uh, and okay. that's yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. That's it, okay, perfect. So I have like a couple of, um, you know, basic questions, but uh, we got these questions a lot too. What is the axial load of casing? Axial load, the casing, it's the, it's the stress that uh, might apply by the fluid or the formation after we load the, uh, after we uh, run the casing. So that's why to prevent those stress on the casing, uh, current and long-term stress, we pump the cement. So the cement is gonna isolate every kind, uh, all the kind of pressure, stress from the formation and from the fluid on the casing. So that's why I mentioned that it's gonna support the casing uh, in the long term. Okay, so uh, another question. How can we determine the number of joints in the show track? This one, uh, there is no determ determination for it. It's uh, based on the drilling technique that uh, the oil company are familiar with. As I mentioned, it's uh, usually from one joint to two joint, which is from 40 feet to 90 feet, and sometimes it's 45 feet. As well, it's depend on uh, what type of casing they already like, uh, the oil company uh, arranged to buy or to use, and what kind of color, uh, a flat color they're gonna use. Are they gonna use flat color and flat shoe, or they only are they only gonna do like uh, a flat color and guide shoe? And sometimes the, uh, uh, the oil company they're gonna do wet shoe, so they don't need the flat color at all. So it's the bend in the in the oil company. Uh, what are they familiar with? There is no exactly rule of thumb uh, how many joint, but as I mentioned, there is average uh, uh, number, which is one to two joints. Okay, so um, are there any special requirements for HP HT wells? Yeah, of course. Uh, whenever you have high pressure, high temperature, the property of the chemical additive that you're gonna use for cement is gonna be definitely different. Uh, for example, if you are dealing with high, high brush uh, temperature, which here is talking about over than 210 uh, Fahrenheit, you might need to use uh, silica. Uh, if you are dealing with low temperature, uh, you might uh, end up using only neat cement, which is cement without any additive. Sometimes if you are using a moderate temperature from 150 to 200, you might end up using uh, with uh, some uh, chemical that it's not expensive, but it's not cheap. But whenever we have high temperature, high pressure, we will need to use more expensive chemical to achieve a property of cement and keep this property for long term after we uh, pump the cement and start producing. Okay, um, what's the difference between the flow collar and the flow shoe? Okay, the float shoe, it's similar to uh, for a uh, guide shoe, but it has vo valve. So the float shoe, it helped to guide the casing while we're running the casing inside the hole. As well, it has, uh, it has a valve, a one-way valve that allows the cement to go through it and not coming back to the casing. Flat color, uh, it's a valve that exists one to two joints above the flat shoe. It's kind of safety valve to prevent the cement from flowing back to the casing after we bump the cement. Okay, so um, why and in which cases we should do a conductor cementing job? We do conductor cement job if uh, 
if you are if you know that the area that you're going to start drilling the well on it it's not really uh consolidated you expect to have some collapse and this collapse could lead to uh to the rig not to be stable while you're drilling as i mentioned like uh, one time one of the uh, company that i work with them they didn't uh, drill a conductor and looks like they are not permitted that area when they start drilling the surface casing the rig collapsed because the the ground under the rig was not stable so that's why they do conductor and usually the conductor it's drilled not by uh oil rig oil rig they drill it with another rig very small rig so that's why if you have unstable uh ground you can drill conductor using another uh, small rig to to create uh, a solid foundation whenever you're gonna uh, rig up your rig and start drilling surface casing. And as well, they use it for return for the mud whenever you start drilling your surface and intermediate. Okay, perfect. So um, last question, you already answered that on the day of the session, but just in case because of the technical problem and the voice, let's record mm -hmm. it again. So um, can we rely only on the solidification time instead of compression test results in order to resume drilling? Okay, for this answer, uh, for this question, uh, the UCA ultrasonic uh, analysis uh, it's the main source for uh, the compressive strength uh, result, which give us indication to uh, when we st should start drilling and when we should start fracking the formation. Uh, for instance, in New Mexico here, uh, you cannot uh, start or continue or resume drilling unless you have a complete result for compressive strength, which is UCA. And usually we get it from uh, the machine that they show in the presentation, ultrasonic uh, analysis. But along, I'm not familiar and I don't know about uh, another technique to estimate the ultra, uh, to estimate the, the compressive strength for the scene. However, uh, I would say this is the only technique that we use in oil and gas, which is uh, ultrasonic analysis. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Engineer Ahmed, for agreeing to come back and answer all the questions. Uh, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we wish you a great uh, rest of the weekend because we interrupted yours. And for everyone else, we are resuming our sessions tomorrow, so see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, and have a good day. Thank you, Nihal. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Have a good day, guys. Thank you.